Hey everybody, I'm Brandon. And I'm Brian. Welcome to another episode of the Workshop Review. <laughs> this month, we're working with Total Boat and a new product they just came out with this year. It's specifically designed for marine applications and it's sort of a, a brush-on, spray, varnish type deal. And uh, we think you're really going to like it. First thing you'll notice is it, it comes in these bags, right? This is a, this is a one quart bag. And um, weren't totally sure how we felt about that at first. You know, usually your finish comes in a can, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, but after after kind of handling it and using it and pouring it out of this thing, um, we're kind of sold. Yeah, right. It's it's extremely convenient. Uh, getting dust or other particles in it while you're you're opening and closing it uh, is reduced. Oh, well, almost completely uh, opposed to a whole can. Uh, mixing it, I mean, you can literally shake it in the bag, and it, it just makes it a lot easier just to, to pour just the little bit that you need instead of getting it all down the side of, of a normal can. Uh, Another nice thing uh, about coming in a bag is if, if you're one of those guys who likes to keep the air out of your finish while it's being stored, it's real easy just to squeeze the air out of this and then put the cap back on, and then you've got at least less air in your finish than you would if it were just closing a can. Absolutely. Um, and like Brian said, this particular finish is a varnish and like uh, like Total Boat does, almost everything that they make is modeled to be used in a marine application. So for the home woodworker, this stuff is irreplaceable when it comes to doing outdoor finishes. It all dries UV protected and stable. Uh, I've used used a couple of their products, such as Gleam, uh, on an outdoor table, and it, it turned out amazing and has just held up super well with the weather. So, this being one of their newer products, we were extremely pleased with working with it. The the smell was was not pugnant. It was it was hardly any smell whatsoever. In fact, you can actually just open it and smell it, and it's it really is just fine. Um, so you could use it inside without, you know, any, any irritation, which is, which is really quite surprising for a varnish. Most varnishes are, are fairly strong in the scent. Um, the other thing about this particular varnish is that it is a fast application varnish. In, as long as you are in a shop space that is above 50 degrees, you can apply a coat once an hour. So you can get up to five or six coats in one day and not sand in between coats. That's the other cool thing about it being marine grade varnish. So if you're looking to not spend days finishing, this is an outstanding solution for you. Uh, so we have a couple of, of pieces of wood that we're going to show application methods on, as well as we have a couple that are pre-finished so that we can actually look at the, the final product. But a word about what happens when you order this piece. Uh, this, like we tried to say earlier, this is the House Ion finish. Uh, they have lots of products. New this year. And when you order this, it comes with two plastic buckets. It comes with two filters. Two gloves. And two foam brushes. Uh, again, like like we mentioned earlier, it, you can brush it with foam brushes, you can spray it, and you can roll it. So literally, any application method that tickles your fancy, you can do with this product. Now one thing that you sh you're probably thinking when you hear the word spraying, oh man, how do you clean that up, right? Soap and water. Soap and water cleans this stuff up, and you can clean it up as long as... Uh, you know, it's not cured. So you've got, what, well, about an hour, you know, before you actually have to, to clean up your, your equipment, which uh, you don't have with a lot of other finishes. So I really like that. Well, I think the, I mean, total cure time on it is 12 hours. So, I mean, and that's the one thing about, about varnishes and layering with these, with these marine grades is how they work, is you're applying your additional coats 
before it is fully cured so that they cure into each other and bond, which is why you don't have to sand between coats like you would have to do with a typical lacquer. Um, so what you're really doing is as soon as it stops getting tacky, you're applying that so that it bonds and builds up that extremely durable finish. So tabletops, any form of like flooring, especially for boats, of course, you know, anything that is going to be out in the weather, seat stuff that's going to get a lot of attention, wear and tear, and needs to be uh, able to penetrate any form of liquid or abuse that it might get. Uh, this would be the perfect application. So what do you say we start uh, putting this stuff on some wood? Yeah, let's do that. Let's take a look. For this uh, particular application, we don't really have a roller ready and uh, the sprayer that we have is actually full for from another project. So we are just going to apply it with the foam brushes that came with it and honestly it's going to be a lot easier for you to see and watch and uh, and be dazzled. So uh, let's get to it. For this we have a piece of walnut that we're going to do and I believe this piece of your sycamore? Sycamore. Yep. A nice piece of sycamore. So let's apply some finish. Alright guys just real quick for this demonstration I'm just going to pour a little bit of this uh, right on the wood and we're going to brush it out and we can look and see how it applies and uh, how it works with a brush. So let's uh, get to it. So of course one of the big reasons we're doing this is because this is probably one of the favorite parts of all of our projects is, is seeing the wood come to life with, with the finish. Um, and you know we mentioned this a little bit earlier that this particular product is a marine grade varnish and it dries to a UV stable gloss finish. This particular varnish only comes in gloss. If you want to dull down the gloss, you can dilute it up to 20%. Um, I will say that after I have seen it dry, that the gloss that it produces is minimal at best. It does not create this really plasticky look that you normally get with glosses. Um, it does not produce a film, which is which is really nice. Uh, so where I would normally choose a satin, this gloss works really well. And a little bit of it goes a really long way. Now, as Brian pours a whole bunch of it on that piece of walnut. Yeah, it was way um, too much. <laughs> so we did pour it directly on this wood because uh, we're just doing this as a sample. We didn't really feel like putting into a cup and and try you know and pour more than we needed to however we did that anyway wow look at that walnut that does look really nice that's yeah that's that's pretty sexy so this is a low odor low voc formula it does clean up with soap and water so uh as long as you uh pay attention to what you're on and, and clean all of your tools well after um spray or your sprayer or anything with soap and water you'll be good to go. You do not need to sand between coats, which is, in my opinion, one of the most painstaking processes on larger projects, is in between coats getting all the sanding and then getting all of the sanding residue off before applying yet another coat. So it is really easy just to go in there and just keep applying coats. And then you'll do a final sanding at the very end, which we'll show a little bit later, uh, just to, to smooth out your surfaces. This is compatible with one and two part varnishes. And it does come in a clear gloss and a clear amber gloss, which we will show both. Hey Brian, do you smell that? No, I don't smell anything. Yeah. And it brushes on really smooth. Like it kind of just glides across. Like it's not sticky. Like, you know, sometimes you uh, apply shellac. If it's a really thick cut, it gets kind of sticky if you're not fast enough. It actually almost kind of works like a like a, like a water-based polyurethane is what it reminded me of yes. brushing on. Yes. And I, I did mention earlier that you can uh, dilute it if you want a little bit less of a gloss. Um, also, unlike a lot of other spar varnishes or, or regular varnishes, this particular one does not require that you dilute it on the first coat. A lot of varnishes recommend that you dilute it on the first coat so that it can soak in deeper 
and kind of cure the surface. You know, I have to say that I don't, um, I typically do not use foam brushes on, on applications uh, of finish. Most of the time my finishes are just seem too sticky or it seems too messy or I can never get the brush strokes out. And using this product as well as some others from Total Boat, uh, I've had no problems with foam brushes. In fact, it was actually extremely easy to put on and, and clean up with, so it was, it was actually a nice surprise. Alright, so this is the board that uh, I did in preparation for this video. This is a hunk of apple, um, and it was a little punky, uh, which, you know, I wanted to kind of see what this would do with that in the event that I needed some stabilizing. And I applied three coats of each, the clear and the amber, to this board. This section right here is just the clear as is with no dilution or anything added. And I did not even do the final sanding. And it's, it's, I mean, even, you know, you can't see any strokes. The, the punky parts uh, have stabilized fairly well. Um, you know, I don't know that I would use this as a, a full-on stabilizer in there. It could use... Uh, a little bit of help there but you know it did a surprisingly good job this looks uh, beautiful uh, a lot like what you saw when we applied it directly uh, a few minutes ago this the colors came out fantastic uh, there is uh, the the gloss that is on it is it looks great um, you know it doesn't look doesn't have that plasticky look you can see from our photography light, the the little refraction of of the light there, which is a lot brighter than any overhead lights you would normally have, so it's a little bit shinier. However, it, I mean, it just looks stunning. Uh, this section here I did dilute by 20%, or my estimation of 20%, just to kind of get a little bit of, of the gloss out. Uh, I didn't really notice a huge difference in in that and getting the luster out but also uh, you know I was kinda estimating on <clears throat> on that so it, I mean it still looks great I wasn't really all that worried about it then down here we have the amber and the amber dilution uh, again the coloration was was surprising like normally when I hear amber in a finish I just stay away from it because it yellows it so much that I really don't want to use it and mm. this really wasn't wasn't like that whatsoever it it, it came out uh, beautifully uh, you know it still has that same luster and you can kinda see the coloration differences here between the two uh, which is quite nice and just as a little bit of reference this is what the bear would uh, was looking like. So you can see the differences there. In addition, actually I'm going to hand this to Brian. In addition, I threw it on this uh, scrap blank that I had, which is uh, hard maple and walnut, which is very similar to, you know, kind of what we just uh, did an application of. And this also was three coats of the clear and and the amber and you can see the difference between the clear uh, there and the amber on the bottom as well as I did a little bit on the rough side just to so you could see it next to the bare wood of what the clear represents and and the amber uh, so a really clear finish uh, real quick to put on uh, you know it really didn't uh, distort the wood it actually made it pop out very very well uh, very, very, uh, I would definitely use this on, on my pieces. So, um, let's do a little sanding on this and see how this turns out. Um, this hasn't been sanded at all yet, and they recommend just sanding with 320. So, that's what we're going to do. And we'll see how it looks compared to just right off the brush. And then we'll also try it a little bit with steel wool 
uh, over the 320 to see if, you know, maybe 320 isn't actually necessary. Because it's, you know, it's actually a, a pretty decent finish as is. It might not need that much. And like we had said earlier, there was no sanding in between coats. Which is normally what you do on a, on a urethane or an oil finish. And probably what most people do in between a lacquer finish. Um, this is the first time we're sanding it other than the surface prep. So, let's, uh, let's sand it out here and, and see what, what comes of it. Now you can tell from Brian's technique, he's focusing in on it. That was my phone going off. He's focusing in on it, making sure to cut with the grain, all in the elbow, not in the wrist whatsoever. Nice, light strokes. Light, long strokes. That is nice and smooth. Is it? That smoothed right out. Wow. Wow. That is really smooth. That almost feels like uh, you sanded with something closer to a thousand grit. And this is with the 320. So now, we're going to see what happens when Brian uses some steel wool. Polish it up a little bit. That's good. Alright, so let's take a look at the, the sanded portion versus an unsanded portion. Alright, so this is the, the portion that we sanded. This is the amber portion that uh, we have not sanded. And to look at them, there really isn't much of a difference. But feeling them, it's, it's night and day. This is like baby's butt. This is like you just applied some finish on it, you know, it's still a little, needs a little work. Um, but it doesn't really appear to have changed the, the appearance of the finish at all, which I like. And it, you know, you sanded it, you know, you know you're sanding it at the right time when it uh, creates that little, that little powder, uh, which it did. And it was really easy. You didn't have to go, you know, up through a bunch of grits or anything like that. Just the 320, and uh, I'm not even. We didn't even need to do the steel wall. I just wanted to see what it looked like. Uh, and I'm gonna come in here and kind of wipe up any of that sand and grit we had too. And it was even then. It was just trying to repel the water. Ooh, ooh, I like it. Now because this is a marine grade varnish and it dries hard, which I'm hoping you guys can see this, the water is actually just pooling. How about you just... Well, I wasn't going to do that because it's my drinking water, but okay, let's do it. You okay, drink that. warm water? Well, it's warm compared to what it is outside. <laughs> Up here in northern Pennsylvania, it's a little bit cold, guys, Just, just, uh, just so you all know. So, like we said, if you want an extremely durable uh, surface, look at this. The water is just pulling on it. And that's only after three coats that we applied in one day. That's pretty amazing. Now, just for a little bit of, of playing, you know, a little bit of devil's advocate, what we're going to do is down here on this here clear section, we're going to try to do this uh, with just the steel wool and not the 320 and see how smooth it comes out. Because uh, sometimes, you know, uh, 320 is a little bit more abrasive than you need, which really, if you can get away with doing a 400 or even a 600, uh, you'll end up with a much smoother surface. Again, Brian with fantastic technique. And... I almost like that better. Yeah, I, I would agree. So you can, you know, you can still feel in in these hard punkier areas, which we expected. But honestly, in the, in the areas that were prepped uh, appropriately, that that steel wool turned out really, really well. So there you have it. Even the top coat doesn't require an immense amount of grit to to smooth out. 
So that means, you know, there was really no irregular bubbling or, well, of course, hopefully there would be no bubbling, but no swirl marks, brush marks, anything like that. It merged extremely well. Well, we hope you really liked watching us sand and apply finish. We know it's a, a little irregular uh, for a review, but we really felt that this product needed to be out there in the woodworking community because it's really not just for Marine. It, it's for us as well. And in addition to us talking about it, we have a little clip from somebody you might know. So, hope you enjoy. Hey guys, I'm Will Walker from the William Walker Company and today uh, I was asked to speak a little bit about Total Boat, uh, specifically their 2 to 1 epoxy. Um, or at least that's specifically what I want to talk about. I have a bunch of their other products that I haven't uh, had a chance to really dive into wholeheartedly and, and really check out, but I have uh, done a lot of work with their two to one epoxy. Uh, a two to one epoxy is a staple in my shop. I do fine woodworking, um, furniture making, things like that, custom commissions for clients. Uh, so I work with a lot of live edge slabs, uh, some client source materials. Maybe they had something milled uh, on their farm and they wanted a piece of furniture made out of it. And so in that I need to make the wood stable and pretty to make their heirloom piece. So a lot of the times I'm stabilizing cracks and checks and voids and bug holes and things like that. And so I use a two to one epoxy in my shop frequently. So before Total Boat came onto the market, I had been using West Systems epoxy and that had been working great. Uh, one big grape that I had with West Systems is that it wasn't clear. It was uh, amber and very amber at that. It even says on the back of the can that it will get more amber with age. It will darken with age. It will still be as strong. Uh, but for me, because I'm not using it um, just to bond things, but the, but the epoxy would actually be seen. And a lot of the times I wasn't crazy about that. Then Total Boat came onto the market with their two to one epoxy and their similar pump system. So they've got the epoxy and the hardener, the resin and the hardener um, and a pump system. So one pump of this is equal to one pump of this. There's no measuring, no graduated cylinders. Three pumps of this equals three pumps of this. Ten pumps of this equals ten pumps of this. And you mix it up um, and then it, it cures clear so on your right my left is west systems you can see how amber it actually is uh, i just drilled a hole through a piece of wood and then uh, poured some epoxy in it and then on my right your left is the total boat epoxy you can see how much clearer it is and it actually uh they actually cure much clearer than this but uh, I just sanded it off the top just to get it flush and then I never took it up through the polishing grits to, to get a glass like finish. So what does that mean with uh, pouring things for voids, cracks, checks, bug holes, etc. And that means that this isn't going to impart a hue on your project that you don't want. One more thing that I like about Total Boat is that their pump system seems to pump out uh, less volume per pump than say a West Systems. Uh, and what that means is epoxy is expensive. I think it's like 150 bucks for this kit, 150 or 160 bucks for this kit. So every pump out of this uh, costs money. I can't do a half a pump of this and a half a pump of this because then my ratio would be off and I'd be eyeballing. I run the risk of the epoxy not curing. So with a smaller volume coming out per pump, I'm not wasting as much uh, and I can always add more pumps to uh, to a cup to mix as I need it, but I'm not wasting it per one pump. And uh, I don't know what else to say about two to one epoxy other than um, I really, really, uh, really like the Total Boat stuff. Uh, it's my go-to. It holds really well. I've never had it fail. It's super easy to mix. Uh, it's one pump to one pump. It uh, cures clear. It's fast. It's easy. Anyway, that's it for me. And uh, back to you guys. Thanks. So, like every month, we're giving some of this stuff away. And uh, why don't you tell them about it? So, Total Boat was gracious enough to want to give away a quarter of this. The winner gets to choose whether or not to get they want the amber or the clear. 
Either one is a fantastic option. In addition to giving away a quart of this, our viewers are also going to get a discount code at TotalBoat.com or Jamestown Distributors. So go check out all of their products because they have just tons of them. I've heard great things about their epoxy from a lot of our other woodworking hobbyists, and we hope that uh, maybe you'll see some of that in the spring. Uh, but for now, you got to sign up to win. Let's so go check out the links in the description uh, to enter the giveaway, to uh, use the discount code. All of that information is going to be down below. And um, looking forward to giving some of this away. I really like it. You know, I think I like the amber better than the clear. I don't usually wow. like amber finishes. I did not see that coming whatsoever with this guy. I don't, I don't care for amber finishes, but... I think it's like just the right amount of color. Yeah, I mean, it is It is nice and subtle. That is, that is for sure. Uh, so we hope that you enjoyed our look into this finish. Uh, it is, you know, uh, a newer finish. It's this year. It needs to be out there in, in the woodworking community, not just boats. Because let me tell you, this is, a, this is one durable finish that looks fantastic. Good Thanks luck, for guys. tuning in. And good luck. We'll see you.